Welcome back. A common type of peripheral is a memory stick. These are small devices that can store large amounts of data. They are great for moving large files between computers or for keeping or working files with you if you use different computers. They normally connect to the computer via a USB connector. Find a spare USB port on the computer and simply plug the device in. Don't force it too much. If it doesn't go in with a little pressure, it normally means you are trying to insert it upside down. Just turn it over again and try again. The connection should be a snug fit. As you insert the device, Windows should detect it and play a device connected sound. Now when we open Windows Explorer, we should find the device under this PC. Yours may have a different name, normally based around the manufacturer of the device. Notice that from this view we can see the overall size as well as the amount of free space available. To view the contents of the memory stick, double click its icon. Now we are looking at a list of its contents. I'll cover how to manage files and folders a little later in this course. For the time being, connecting the device to the computer is sufficient. If you have a smartphone, you can connect this to a Windows computer as well. I'll show you what happens when you plug an Android phone into the computer. You can treat it like a memory stick if you need. You might find yourself at a computer wanting to take a copy of a file but not have a memory stick with you. If you have your phone and a cable, normally a standard charging cable will work, you can use your phone instead. It's also a great way to copy or back up the photos and videos you may have taken on your phone. Plug the charging cable into your phone just as normal. The other end of this cable has probably got a familiar USB connection. You might have to disconnect it from the charging plug to see the USB connection. Just plug this into the computer, just as we did with the memory stick. Once connected, Windows will set up the newly connected device. You might see a few messages appear at the bottom right as it goes through this process. First it will tell you that it's setting up the device. Once completed, you may see another message that says Select what happens when the device is connected. If you click this message, you will be able to choose what happens whenever you connect the phone in future. The options include Import Photos and Video, useful if you want to use this to automatically back up the photos and videos on your phone whenever you connect it. Take no action or open device to view files, which opens Windows Explorer for you whenever the phone is connected. Finally, the message device is now ready will appear in the bottom right to show that the device has been successfully connected. You may need to grant permission for the computer to access the phone from the phone's screen. The exact process for this will depend on the phone. On mine, whenever I connect the phone, I get a message something along the lines of allow computer permission to view files. Once I tap accept, the computer may display the previous message again as it configures itself now that it can see the files on the phone. With the phone now connected, I can open File Explorer and once again the new device is displayed under this PC. Double click it to browse the file system. For example, if I go into this DCIM folder, I can find all the pictures and video that's stored on the phone. Once you're finished with the memory stick or phone, the temptation is just to simply unplug it from the computer. There is, however, a process that you should follow before unplugging it. This tells the computer to stop accessing the device and to prepare it for removal. If you don't do this and simply disconnect it or unplug it, you run the high risk of corrupting anything on the drive, meaning that there will be no way of accessing or opening the files. In most severe cases, failing to tell Windows that you are about to disconnect the device can actually physically damage the device, although this is quite rare. So how do we tell Windows that you want to disconnect the phone or memory stick? In the bottom right you will see a small icon that looks a bit like a memory stick. If it's not visible, click the up arrow on the left of the system tray. Click it, then click the option that says Eject, followed by the name of the memory stick. The name is often the manufacturer or model name. In this case I need to click Eject Ultra 3.0. It will take a few seconds, maybe longer if the computer is still using the device. But once the process is completed, you'll see a message pop up that states it is safe to remove the hardware. You can now safely unplug the device. Just a quick note, if you changed your mind after clicking the eject option, you'll need to unplug and plug the device back in.
before you'll be able to access it again. In this video, I've shown you how to connect a USB memory stick to the computer, along with how to view the files stored on the memory stick. Connecting and browsing an external hard drive is exactly the same. They are just bigger, both physically and in storage size. We then compared this to the process of connecting a smartphone to the computer. Remember, this can be used in the same way as a USB memory stick, or as a way of copying the photos, etc. stored on the phone. And we finished by looking at how to safely disconnect these from the computer. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.